Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Grapes, a tool for maintaining mental health in everyday life in challenging times. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind you all that if there's time, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end of the presentation. So if you're attending on Zoom, you can just type your question into the Q&A chat box. And if you're joining us on Facebook Live, you can just leave a comment. I'm honored to introduce our presenter today, Amanda Messia. Amanda is a proud graduate of the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Program at Sharp Mesa Vista Hospital. While attending their intensive outpatient program, she learned the mental health tool, GRAPES. Amanda has been using the tool every day since and proudly shares it with loved ones, friends, and now you. She is a silly and dedicated human being that strives to learn from her mistakes, tries hard to make a difference, and cherishes her friendships, family, dogs, and nature. She knows that life is full of ups and downs and it is in our acknowledgement of our own and each other's joy and suffering that we find balance, courage, and true connection. Thank you so much for joining us today, Amanda. You're welcome to get started whenever you're ready. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much to Natalie and the International Bipolar Foundation for your work um, in the community. You're so beautiful and powerful. And I'm really honored that you would um, share my voice in this way. So thank you very much. And thank you to the participants. Um, if you feel comfortable, I would love to know um, where you're joining from. So please feel free to put in the chat where you're joining from and um, ask questions throughout this presentation in the chat. And I, we will be going through there in the end and having a Q&A. So I will set the intention to leave at least 15 minutes of Q&A so that we can um, absolutely talk to each other. This is so wonderful. Um, Illinois, South Africa, Iowa, Dublin. Oh, so great. Pittsburgh. Go Pittsburgh. I'm from Meadville and I love South Africa. I've been there too. So I, uh, Erie, love it. Winnipeg, Vienna. This is truly international. How, how exciting. Well, I am in San Diego, California, and my name is Amanda Mesha. And um, as Natalie was so gracious to do, she gave the intro. And I want to make sure that I say I am not an expert. I'm not a therapist, but I am a proud graduate. So a proud graduate of a cognitive behavioral therapy program. So I am going to start my presentation now and I'm gonna ask you in advance to giving me a little bit of grace in that um, I'm using Keynote and that I can see the thumbnails because I like to see what's next. So I know it doesn't look like all that pretty. So just um, if you could put up with that a little bit, that'd be great. So I wanna show you um, what my life looked like. This is pre-pandemic. This is in, these pictures are all from 2019 and before. So this is what my life looked like in 2018, early 2019. I love camping with my husband and hiking. I was a kid's cooking teacher. I did a lot of political organizing and attended very large events. I did a lot of home improvement and walking with my dogs. I love to play pickleball with my mother. Um, I'm a big ocean lover and spending time in the ocean. I live in San Diego. And um, I had a really um, uh, playful spirit. And you can see a bottom picture in the right. I was stealing some beer out of somebody's cooler and I got caught. So very playful, very joyful. Um, and that's who I was in 2018 and 2019. And next we're going to use, um, this photo as the view of my life, but we're going to use a um, mountain as a metaphor. And I want to be careful to explain this. So I didn't perceive my life as like, oh, I was at the top of this mountain and I had this great view. I was in the middle of climbing up a mountain and, um, I wanted to ski down it. You know, my life's a mountain, it's a nice view, let's go down. However, I didn't realize something about my life, which maybe you can relate to. It's that in my life, I had a lot of unresolved trauma and grief, um, both in my past and happening currently. And uh, let's look at what unresolved trauma and grief is. 
So first of all, to understand there's individual uh, trauma and grief, and then there's collective trauma and grief. And individual grief and trauma can be anything from a death of a loved one, including miscarriage, serious illness yourself or a loved one, breakup or a loss of a friend, loss of a job, loss of physical ability, loss of your home, loss of a community, death of a pet, assault or abuse, lack of secure and safe housing, lack of money for basic needs, and being at risk or experiencing hunger and isolation. That's individual. And then we also have collective grief and trauma. So global pandemic, uh, racism, we're experiencing a lot of um, collective grief and trauma around racism in this country of the United States. Also our collective grief and trauma around our environmental catastrophe, which is climate change, including um, mass shootings and terrorism or economic grief, such as times of the Great Depression or recently through a global pandemic and general societal unrest and political discord. So when you look through this list, maybe you can relate and this is not a comprehensive list, so I haven't included everything. But um, there's a lot of grief and trauma that could have happened in the past or that could be happening currently. So let's go back to that metaphor of a mountain. So here I am, I'm at the top of this mountain. I wanna go skiing down it. However, um, this video is gonna play, so please watch this video. What I was unaware of in 2019 was that um, my past traumas, I was gonna kind of ski right over them. And I didn't know that they were still there. And as I hit some of my past grief and traumas or as they rose back up, you start to see that there's a little bit of snow that starts to cascade. And then I had some new trauma. I had some new loss. I had some new grief. And I had some really hard things that started happening and they started piling up and you can see I fell. And I thought I was gonna be okay. And I kept going, I kept skiing. I thought, this is fine, I'll just tumble a little bit. But all of a sudden, I realized I could not outrun the collective grief and trauma of my past and the new things that were happening to me. And as they cascaded and I got stuck on the mountain, I was absolutely 100% covered in grief and trauma. And I found myself in a deep, deep black hole. And if you've ever talked to anyone who has experienced depression, they will describe it as a deep, dark hole. And in fact, this was my journal um, of this time. And in the bottom right, you'll see this is, this is what it looked like. I was sitting in a dark hole by myself. I couldn't even, um, I couldn't even uh, put features on my face. I had to like scribble just this black mass on my face. And I absolutely wanted to do nothing. Um, and I couldn't and didn't want to speak. I was almost mute. I didn't, I couldn't sound, I couldn't stand the sound of someone's voice. Um, everything that I previously loved to do held no interest. In fact, the only thing that I really wanted to do was like watch crap movies on Netflix, um, eat Flaming Hot Cheetos and um, drink IPA, like that's it. I wanted to do nothing. And I was really, really lucky because I had some people in my life who saw me down there and they threw me a lifeline. So these were the critical tools when I was experiencing a major depression. I had friends and family who saw me. I had health insurance. I had the ability to get on an antidepressant medication right away. And most importantly, I had, um, I shouldn't say most importantly, equally important. I had the knowledge um, through a friend of the Sharp Mesa Vista program and the ability to enroll into the cognitive behavioral therapy program. 
So um, this was huge. Now the qualifier to, to enrolling is that, you know, you had to have a major depressive disorder. So um, I had that. So I was lucky enough to get in. I recognize that not everybody has these critical tools in order to seek care, but it, and I'll say even with all these things, it wasn't easy getting in. It wasn't easy getting medication. It wasn't easy getting a diagnosis. It wasn't easy at all. It was really tricky in America, our healthcare system. That's a whole nother webinar, but I got in. And then once I got in to this program, the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Program, I had even more tools. So first I was pulled out of that hole and next I was given a pickaxe. And so these are the tools that helped me get off the mountain. I had excellent therapists. I had group therapy. They had a garden at the mental hospital. So I was able to go into a garden and see nature. Um, most importantly, they had lectures and curriculum. And so everything that I will speak about um, in here, I learned through those lectures and curriculum. I was um, reintroduced to breathing techniques and meditation. I, I learned about conflict resolution, um, a concept called the anger thermometer, which is brilliant, emotion regulation, journaling. Um, but for the purposes of this webinar, I want to briefly cover healthy eating and sobriety, core belief, cog model, but most importantly, grapes. So we're going to touch on four of the critical tools, but really deep dive into grapes. So first and foremost, if this is a challenging time for you, or if this is just an okay time for you, um, one of the most important things you can do is really dedicate yourself to healthy eating and sobriety. So I did a lot of stress management by having a beer at the end of the day. It helped, but guess what? It didn't help the next day and it didn't help from day to day. So if you're struggling at all with any kind of anxiety or depression, I kindly urge you to get really great food if you're able to, and also cut out all alcohol. And um, if you are uh, seeking any relief through any other drugs, please stop doing them. Um, it may feel good in the short term, but in the long term, it is not helping. So healthy eating and sobriety, can't thank it enough. That's a fresh squeezed orange juice over there. Uh, next thing is exploring your core belief and making a balanced core belief. So I learned in therapy that I had a really weird core belief. Maybe you can relate, but my core belief when I went into therapy was bad things keep happening to me. So I must be a bad person. I thought I was being punished um, because I was bad and I didn't know how to like get out of the cycle. Um, therapy helped me realize that bad and good things happen to everybody. Life is full of both joy and struggle. So my core belief changed from bad things happen to me because I'm a bad person to bad and good things happen to everybody. And life is full of both joy and struggle. And so out of that balanced core belief, I learned that I didn't need a life without struggles. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not just looking for joy, joy, joy all the time. What I needed was the education and tools to approach my struggles that were inevitable, like all of us, um, to approach our struggles in a balanced way. So tools and education. So I can't um, recommend enough exploring your core belief. Next tool is the cognitive model of emotional behavior. So if you look at this model in clockwise form, this is how our brain, our brains are hardwired, but our brains do this cognitive model in less than a second. So we go from situation to thought to emotion and behavior automatically. And that happens automatically to save us a lot of decision time. But a lot of times we're just trying to protect ourselves and we need to, especially if we're uh, depressed or we're anxious, we sometimes need to reset our cognitive model, slow it down or reassess it. So let's look at what was happening with my cognitive uh, model of behavior at the time when I was in um, outpatient therapy at the hospital. So my situation, I'm in a mental hospital. Um, my thought, I'm a loser. My emotion was deep shame and embarrassment. And my behavior, the first day I um, went to the program, 
it says I cried on the drive home. That's an understatement. I snot cried the whole way home. <laughs> I snot cried and called everyone and said, oh, you know, not everyone, called the people that I trust the most and said, I can't go back. They encouraged me to go back. And I was really secretive about the program because uh, there's a lot of stigma around mental health. So this was what was happening. I'm in a mental hospital, I'm a loser, shame, embarrassment, cry, um, and not being open about my struggle. Not healthy, not really helpful. So what I did, this is my after, this is what my balanced approach, I switched it. So I'm sure as you saw in the lead in, I didn't say I was a patient, which it's fine if you're a patient. I changed it to, I'm a student. I'm a student in a mental hospital. And then my automatic thought was, I'm learning mental health tools. And then my emotion became hope and calm. And my behavior became one of immense curiosity and steadfast dedication. I was gonna be the best student this mental hospital had ever seen, or at least tried to. And that was a tremendous shift. So um, be sure to uh, explore the cognitive model of behavior, in, especially in times when your behavior is um, concerning or you didn't like the way you behaved, you can always um, go back through this model and track it. And there's um, lots more resources and how to do it, but it's a, it's a wonderful tool. So let's go to grapes. The reason we're all here, grapes. So grapes, is an acronym that stands for gentle with self or grace, relaxation, accomplishment, pleasure, exercise, and social. And let's talk about how it works. So it's the simple things that end up making big differences. So life is about joy and struggle, but also life is about the simple joys and the simple accomplishments. So let's, um, let's just remember that. So whether you're looking for more balance in your life or you're having a hard time getting out of bed because of depression, scheduling activities for yourself can not only help increase your energy and improve your mood, as well as it can stabilize your mood during challenging times. So I learned this tool. Um, I graduated the program in like November 2019, right in the nick of time, right? just boom, right into a global pandemic. And I had grapes like ready and waiting. So um, I've been able to stabilize my mood during these challenging times. And it's been really helpful. So uh, next slide is, this is how it works and what it looks like. So grapes is an activity scheduler that can help you keep track of your progress and give you senses of accomplishment every day. And there are six types of activities and they can be as simple or as challenging as you make it. But it's a paper sheet. And this is what one looks like. So paper sheet. And it has both, it has activities listed on the back. So activities listed on the back. The one on the screen, I actually made for pandemic times because a lot of the things that were listed, <laughs> activity list you can't do during a pandemic. Um, but as you'll see, um, you can see my little chicken scratch on there. You fill it out and you fill it out every day. So let's talk about how it works. So it's a two-sided two sheet with the calendar on the front, the acronym on the side, and then an activity list on the back. So first of all, start with a clean sheet. So I have a clean sheet. Look through the activity list for ideas and you pre-fill your activities for the next day or you complete it first thing in the morning for same day. Um, my advice is whenever you tend to feel the most hopeful or motivated is when you should fill it out. For me personally, that's um, when I wake up in the morning and I get that first jolt of coffee, that's when I feel <laughs> the most like I can do anything, you know, before. So anyway, I fill it out first thing in the morning. And it's important that you, um, as you go throughout the day, you check with it. Like I kind of keep it, um, you know, I keep it at my desk when I work. 
I bring it um, into like my dining room at the end of the day. And in the morning I, or at night, I always keep it like next to my, it's on my dresser. So when I wake up, it's there. So my grave sheet kind of goes with me. I'll fold it, I'll tuck it into stuff, but I keep it with me. Um, and then most importantly, not most importantly, but importantly, no double ups and no backfilling. So you cannot have like one activity that goes throughout like the whole day. Um, and then you um, can't like at the end of your day go, oh, I did all this stuff and fill it in. The point is that you fill it in and then you do your best to accomplish the task. Cause it's the sense of accomplishment and doing what you set out to do that really helps your mental health. All right, so let's go through the acronyms. So the G stands for grace or gentle with self. And the definition of grace is courteous goodwill or being gentle and understanding with yourself. And I would also add, this is believing in each other that we're all trying to do our best and we're, we're always approaching each other with the best of intentions. So some of the things that you can do for your G row across the top, start your day with positivity, writing, reading, writing, or poetry. So I always try to read first thing in the morning. So I will put that in my, G's, uh, my G square. Um, you could start or maintain a journal. It is wonderful to do that. Uh, create a gratitude page. I have a gratitude page, which I, I have like a pre-pandemic gratitude page and I have a pandemic gratitude page. And, you know, here in California, gratitude during a pandemic is less traffic. So that's a fun one. Um, this is a great idea too. set aside a worry time. So in these times of tremendous anxiety, we can uh, tend to worry throughout the day, but set aside just 20 minutes and say to yourself, I'm gonna worry at four o'clock. So whenever you get a little thought that comes into your head that says, oh no, what's gonna happen? You start to worry, you file it away and say, I'm gonna worry about that thing at four o'clock. And then at four o'clock, you for 20 minutes, try to look, like, look at your worries. And a lot of the times you can't even remember all the stuff that you like thought you were gonna worry about. So set aside a worry time, 20 minutes a day. Anything more than that, you're kind of mulling and steeping and um, it can be unhealthy. So 20 minutes a day for your worry time. Um, I highly recommend watch the news just once a day and why not in the evening? I used to be a news junkie and I would start out first thing in the morning, like scrolling through my news feed. And for me personally, that was not healthy. So unless you're a morning news anchor who has to be informed first thing in the morning, I would say watch your news once a day and in the evening. Uh, please talk kindly to yourself and others. Um, yeah, that goes without saying, talk kindly to yourself and others. Reflect on what matters most. Read a nurturing book. Drink enough water. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water because I'm a little thirsty talking a lot, um, accept your emotions, even your negative ones. You're allowed to have negative emotions. You're allowed to have sadness, you know? So um, accept them, accept it. Life is full of joy and struggles. Get enough sleep, compliment yourself in the mirror. I used to be pretty down on myself and I would, I noticed that I would look in the mirror you know, maybe after I would wash my hands in the restroom or something, and I stopped um, looking, I stopped leaving the mirror on a negative note. And I would go back and say some compliment myself, find one nice thing to say about yourself when you look in the mirror, that's really helpful. And giving yourself and others grace. So always assuming the best about each other. It goes a long way. All right, next up, relaxation. So for the R square across the bottom every day, um, let's look at the definition. So relief from bodily or mental work, effort, or application. Sounds good. I never did this. I never did this. I was like an accomplishment person and I did not prioritize relaxation. So um, especially here in the United States, we tie a lot of our self-worth to productivity 
and that can be kind of toxic. So let's um, start prioritizing relaxation. So meditating, um, a form of meditation, which is body standing, where you just go through every part of your body. I do it um, when I meditate. I say, hello, head. Thank you for my head. Hello, neck. Thank you for my neck. And you go through every single part of your body and you send it gratitude. So body scan. And you see how your body's feeling too. Maybe there, maybe you have an illness. Maybe you have a back that's out. And you send that body part grace. Uh, yoga and stretching. Taking a sun bath. And with the sun bath, um, I highly recommend putting um, a body part that you don't really get a lot of sun on. Try that. Like, um, I like to put my belly in the sun. It feels really good. Cozy pair of socks. I have a new pair of socks that feel just divine. And I love just to put them on. Uh, a bath, a sauna, a hot tub, uh, lighting candles, incense or sage, um, watching the sunrise, sunset, rain, stars. I mean, really just taking it in. Watch the wind, watch the clouds. It's beautiful. Listen and track nature sounds. Um, this is one of my favorite ones um, that my dear friend taught me. Um, it's called finding evidence that you are here. So really taking a moment in time and tracking all of your senses and writing them down. So what is it that you see? What is it that you hear? What is it that you smell? And what is it that you feel? Um, right now, I see this presentation, but I hear the palm trees whistling out outside. I can smell my candle that I had lit earlier and I feel really grateful. So tracking that and so finding evidence that you are here on this planet. It's a beautiful practice. So that's relaxation. Accomplishment. So accomplishment is a task that has been accomplished, achieved, carried out, or finished. So these are good accomplishments. Set and keep a daily schedule, especially sleeping and waking up and chores. So setting a sleep schedule is really important. I mean, if technology helps, I have an iPhone. It kind of reminds, I set all that up. It reminds me. Um, setting and keeping a cleaning schedule. So keeping your space um, really clean and neat is a wonderful accomplishment. I did not do this. I was messy Tessie and I have realized um, my mental health really um, is a lot better. My mother will be very happy to know I'm finally adopting her cleaning methods. Um, so do the laundry, tidy the kitchen, empty that litter box hate that task, but I am happy that I did it. Uh, make and keep a meal plan to purchase and eat healthy food. So a lot of times I have grocery shop as my accomplishment. Make and keep to a budget. Paying a bill feels really good. Um, go through your closet and pack up things to donate. Try to learn something new. Take an online course, garden, landscape, tackle big projects over time. And then um, most importantly, I want to teach you about a concept called temptation bundling. So I know I referenced um, cleaning. I hated to clean. And I learned about this concept called temptation bundling. So a lot of the times what we do when we have a, an accomplishment is we treat ourselves afterwards. So we might, as children, clean our room to get an ice cream cone. Instead, if we bundle something that we like, with something that we dislike doing or have um, a reticent to do or resistance to do, that helps. So for example, I have discovered that I love audiobooks. So now I will hold um, to listen to audiobooks when I'm cleaning. And so I have found that I will like scrub out the tub to finish a chapter, which is just like unbelievable. So temptation bundling, find something that you like to do and pair it with something that you don't. And whether that's listening to music or an audiobook, um, highly recommend it. Maybe it's a special candle that you light when you're doing a task that you are reticent to do. So paying the bills, have a special bill paying candle. Mm, that's an idea, okay. Uh, Pete, pleasure. A feeling of happy satisfaction and enjoyment. I also did not prioritize this. I thought pleasure was something that just like magically tumbled into my lap. So listening to music, having a dance party or just a slow dance, 
eating outside when you can, starting a flower or nature journal, totally did that. Doing a crossword puzzle or regular puzzle, um, an art project. I've gotten really into watercoloring for the first time in my life with like, you know, those elementary school, like $8 watercolor sets. It's so fun. Um, find a poem and just write it out. Uh, purchase flowers or create a bouquet yourself. Uh, just sit outside, read a book, watch a movie, have a nice dinner, play a board game. So pleasure, make time for it every day. Um, and this is important to talk about. So when we talk about pleasure, when you're in um, a depressive state, or maybe even if you're just like starting to feel a little mildly depressed or anxious, you could be feeling something called anhedonia. And people with anhedonia no longer enjoyed, they no longer enjoy the things that they once loved. So uh, totally. You know, people be like, oh, why don't we go, you know, surfing? You love surfing. And like, when I was depressed, I was like, what are you talking about? I hate surfing. Like anything that I loved in the past, I no longer thought I loved it. So it's important to know that anhedonia is a thing. And it's important to note the things you used to enjoy and don't be so hard on yourself. So if I used to, used to enjoy surfing and being in the ocean, when I was depressed, that seemed like, oh, are you crazy? I'm gonna take a board and paddle out there and be in the waves. It seemed like something that could never happen again in my life. But going and sitting at the ocean was something that I might be able to do. So noting that the things you used to enjoy and started out really small. So if you are a runner, and you're really depressed and you could never imagine running again, um, just take a walk around the block and check it off and pat yourself on the back. Good job. So um, start small and give yourself grace. So eat, exercise. We all know what exercise is, any bodily activity that enhances or maintains physical fitness and overall health and wellness. So walk or hike by yourself or with friends, um, biking, yoga, swimming, tennis, pickleball, big pickleball fan over here, croquet, soccer, basketball, volleyball, take an online exercise class, any, any physical activity that gets you moving and every day, do it every day. Social. So social is collectively interacting. I want to honor that this has been an awful time to be social. And we all probably felt the impact of uh, social isolation. So um, really honoring that. I want to sit with that and honor. It's been really hard. So call a friend or family member create an online hangout, send an email to someone you care about, write a letter, send a card, take an online class, kudos for you, you're doing that now, that totally, this totally counts as a class. Um, tell someone how you feel about them. You know, most of the time when I reach out, people are so happy that um, I reached out. Uh, spend time together and send a thoughtful text. And oh yeah, social media doesn't count. So uh, social media is usually not very healthy. So, um, and you're going on to your feed and you don't know what to expect. So, and you don't know what you're gonna find. So this is really intentional reaching out. You're reaching out to make a connection. So you are the active participant. So um, social. So this is the acronym. Grapes. So let's cover it again. You're going to start with a clean sheet. You're going to look through the activity list for ideas. You're going to pre fill the activities for the next day or that day. And as you go throughout your day, you're going to check your sheet and check off when you've accomplished an activity. So I will tell you that for today, my G. I was, I was gonna wake up and read and journal and I did that. So I checked that off. Um, my relaxation, I meditated this morning. So I checked that off. Accomplishment, host this webinar, checking that off right now. Um, my pleasure, uh, later on today, I am gonna do a little watercolor. 
Um, exercise, taking my dogs for a walk. Social, call mom. I already called my mom, so I checked that off. So um, that's how you do it. And let's um, understand. So how long are we doing this whole grapes thing for? Like, do we do it for a week? When do we start to feel better? Got news for you. You are gonna do grapes every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> so this is what they told me in the program. You're gonna do grapes every day for the rest of your life. Here are some of my grapes, hiking, water coloring. Um, just a simple act of taking an apple outside and eating it outside feels really good. There's my Murphy's oil soap. There's my cat, um, biking with friends, waking up for a sunrise, really nice candle, eating good food. But really, um, I'm just gonna show you you're gonna do it every day for the rest of your life. Um, these are all of my grape sheets. So like, I mean, 60 weeks of these and it's fantastic and it's nice to look back. Um, and this is where I am now. So remembering that metaphor of like, you know, the top of the mountain. Um, this is where I am now. I'm at a mountain, there's no snow. I um, have, uh, approached my previous uh, grief and trauma and I've healed it to the best of my ability and new snow, new grief and trauma. I do not give it a chance to accumulate. In fact, if you look at this picture of me hiking at the top of this hill, I am sweating because I'm using every single tool known to me to not let the snow accumulate. So, um, and then there's also a quote on the right and it says the essence of life is that it is challenging Sometimes it's sweet, sometimes it's bitter, but trying to tie up all the loose ends and finally get it together is death because it involves rejecting a lot of your basic experience. To be fully alive and fully human and completely awake is to be continually thrown out of the nest. And that's Pema children. So this is the conclusion of my official presentation. I wanted to, for my gratitude entry for today, send extreme gratitude to everyone that works and volunteers their time at the International Bipolar Foundation. You do gorgeous, intentional, and fantastic work. And thank you for elevating my small voice in such a profoundly important way. I'm really honored that you had me. And um, now I would love to um, hear from these beautiful 46 participants and maybe some more on Facebook and um, take some Q and A. Thank you so much, Amanda, for your wonderful presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm glad we have some time to do a Q and A. It looks like we have some questions coming in. So, for our first question, someone asked, is grapes for adults only or can other communities or groups use it? Oh yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Anyone could do grapes. Anyone and everyone could do grapes. Uh, in fact, I think it would be a wonderful tool for children. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and then someone else asked, for the activity, is it the exact same one every single day or does it ever change? Oh, that's a really great question. So um, sometimes I'll do the exact same activity every day. Like, uh, let me show you this one. So if you look across my relaxation, that's my little symbol for meditating. It's somebody in a lotus posture. So I, you know, so meditate every day is the goal of mine. Um, so that's my relaxation every day. But then other things, pleasure, I'm, I mix it up. So I might have pleasure, have a popsicle, finish a book, music. I painted, I had a movie night with my husband. I made um, a flower bouquet. So you can um, keep it across the same if you want to, or you can change it up every day, especially like exercise. I don't know if I'd wanna do the same exact thing every day, but it's up to you. Good question. Great, thank you. And then another person asked, can we modify the activities to our liking if there's something on the list that you don't like? Absolutely. Modify away. The point is that you're doing things that you do like and that are healthy and helpful for you. So modify away. Like there are some things on the activity list I don't think I've ever done. 
um, like, I don't like taking a bath. So <laughs> I like showers. So like, I've never done that. So yeah, modify away. Do what makes you happy. And we had a lot of people asking, will there be a way to access these activities after the presentation? Yes, absolutely. So Natalie, I can send you the PDFs. Um, I have the, you know, I have the calendar in a PDF form on the front, and then I have an activity list on the back. Um, so you'll just have to, you know, print them out separately, but that's okay. Okay, great. Yeah. So to everyone who's watching, we will be sharing the recording of this on our website tomorrow. Um, so it's under educational videos, and then we'll also link the PDFs to these activities um, under the video. Okay, and so then we had another question. Um, what would you say is the number one way to come to an acceptance of a diagnosis like depression or bipolar? Hmm. That is such a good question. Thank you so much. That is such a good question. Um, I think, for, so I'll speak on behalf of myself. So receiving a diagnosis was, um, a tremendous relief. I'll be honest, like it was a tremendous relief because um, it, it it helped me understand that it actually was something like it was something concrete and that it was also something that I could um, address in a very profound and dedicated way. So getting a diagnosis may also at first feel really scary and there might be some shame to it. There's a lot of stigma <laughs> attached to mental health. And I will say it took me a while to get here. So it is, you know, a year and a half since I got diagnosed and I'm just feeling um, obviously courageous enough to share. But I will say once I kind of cracked open that door to let people know what was happening, so many people in my life have said, hey, me too. Hey, her too. Hey, him too. Um, my family member, my husband, my wife, my child, my grandchild, they need help too. And so um, being able to accept the diagnosis, understand it, and also um, address it and share is really empowering. So first it was scary, then the acceptance, now it's empowering. Thank you. Um, so for our next question, somebody asked, what would you think is the first step when you're feeling really bad? Because sometimes it's hard to do anything. Mm -hmm. So what would you say that first step of action is? Um, acknowledge it. It's really tough. You're not feeling right. Um, and that anything you do is an accomplishment. So I will say that when you're looking at the sheet and it says accomplishment, like get out of bed and then check that off. And then the next day put, take a shower and check it off. Um, and, and really give yourself grace for those really tangible steps of getting out of bed and taking a shower, because that is a really hard thing to do when you don't feel like yourself. Awesome, thank you. Um, so that looks like those were all of the questions that we had. Um, I would like to remind everyone, again, this will be available on our website tomorrow. Um, and thank you all for joining. And of course, a big thank you to Amanda for joining us today and sharing your knowledge. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I will say I have like additional resources and some podcasts and links and stuff, like some free guided meditations that I found online. So I will be sure to um, send those as well with the PDFs of the Grapes web sheet. And then Natalie, if you wouldn't mind, can you share your website in the chat? Somebody's asking for where they could find this information um, in the future. So I don't okay. know. So I just shared it in the chat. It's ibpf.org. Awesome. Thank you all for um, taking the time and spending this time here and in the space. I see so many names that I know and don't know and so many places that you're from that I love and I would love to get to know too. So um, good job being here. Good job showing up.
and um, may you find balance in your joy and struggles. And thank you for having me. Of course, thank you so much. Bye everyone. Bye.